today, GDP numbers do matter, uh, not only to the market, but uh, for me personally and how you know I trade I with uh, you trade with the top setups um, from the edge finder. I'm very curious to see how a change, better or worse, for US GDP, how that could impact charts like the Australian dollar on here or the Russell or, you know, each one of these that has something to do with the US. So we're just a few minutes out. I'll be keeping an eye on this page. I'll also just real quick, I wanted to touch on this COT data. Uh, if you're wondering why it came in a little bit late this week, it's because there was a bank holiday and usually that sets off the COT report by one day. So we did get the latest commitment of traders data. We do still see gold as a very bullish uh, institutional buy on a net basis and on a percentage basis. What you can see is 86.7% of contracts are on the long side. That is very, very strong. Um, so yeah, we're, we're seeing gold really, really strong there. The Nikkei, oil, silver, USD, these things are strong overall. On the sell side, on the bearish side, we've got the Canadian dollar, the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, the Russell, the 10-year treasury bond, and uh, the Australian dollar. So that's the net basis. But what about the individual kind of this latest week uh, data? This is always really interesting to me as well to kind of see how how well um, on a week over week basis we're seeing movement. So if you take a look at the dollar, this was this caught my eye. There was a lot of demand for the dollar, a huge surge in buying. You can see they dropped a lot of short contracts, they closed a lot of short contracts, and they added a lot of long contracts. Interestingly, they also slightly bought gold. So they added a lot of long contracts and they added just a little bit of short contracts. Net basis, they bought gold. So they bought gold, they bought the dollar. That's kind of uh, unique and, and sometimes can be confusing to people. How do they buy gold and buy the dollar? What's the point of doing that? Well, both of these can be considered sort of risk off uh investments to a degree but also there could be a bet that you know the euro which got sold heavily by institutional money um could be headed for rate cuts way sooner than the us and that could make a divergence where you know traders uh, invest you know traders investors institutional money seems to be selling the euro and going into the dollar that seems to be the trend recently when we take a look at price action we can kind of confirm that idea uh, at least let's take a look here on the euro, right? It's been moving lower overall. We are seeing a bit of a bounce here today. Um, again, GDP numbers in just a few minutes will probably give us some volatility on dollar crosses, whether you're trading currency pairs or gold and also stocks. All of these things could be moving here today. It just depends on whether or not we get a surprise or if we get as expected um, GDP numbers. All right, let's see if we get any volatility from GDP this morning. All right, the GDP numbers did just come out. We see the dollar pushing lower on this initially. Gold also pushing up 23.20. Euro dollar, pound dollar, also seeing a little bit of volatility to the upside. Let's have a look at what those numbers were. We also had claims. So remember, both of these figures came in here this morning. <clears throat> All right, so we had unemployment claims and final GDP numbers come in exactly as expected. We did get a slight, slightly higher durable goods orders and core durable goods was low. So, okay, so overall, everything came in pretty much exactly as expected. And let's have a look at what the market is doing in reaction. We do still see the dollar slightly lower here this morning. Uh, this is a you know a move on the one hour chart, but uh, in terms of a daily chart move, I wouldn't call this anything crazy. Did you know that we have 100% free trading tools and data available for you on our website, a1trading.com right now? We have free courses for you to browse. You can also check out things like retail sentiment and free articles from our analyst, Frank, that include things like edge finder screenshots and trade setups. You can find all of this and so much more for free right now on our website, a1trading.com. Just in time, the dollar's moving lower here this morning. We've got the uh, dollar down, we've got VIX slightly higher, gold and silver are making a move up, yields are falling, Bitcoin and Ethereum are up, dollar yen actually down on the day, that seems uh, out of the ordinary, but um, 
yeah, some interesting moves happening. Uh, James, what are you uh, what are you watching today? Well, we're currently in four positions. We've got the Australian Swiss, we've got silver, uh, Euro Australian, and New Zealand Swiss. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're up quite quite nicely this month, uh, the Elite Traders team. So I'm not really looking to place anything new. It's more a case of now closing out of uh, open positions. All right. Uh, very cool. So the only thing i'll just pull it up quickly uh the only thing i am looking at is a euro dollar short uh so i've been speaking for quite a while about the situation in europe specifically france uh so we can see here by ing uh the french ele uh, french election uh, defensive positioning favor lower euro dollar before friday's uh, pce so i'm looking for maybe a small intraday trade on euro dollar but that's about it Okay, so uh, I'm curious with the euro dollar idea. Um, what are your levels looking like on that? I've got, uh, you know, on, on my side, kind of just uh, some consolidation here, but some mm. resistance up in this area. We do see the euro moving a little bit higher today. Are you kind of close to a, a setup idea uh, currently, or what are you looking yeah, for? Yeah, there's, there's something that could could play out here. Um, so I think uh, I was last on a Tuesday, uh, and I took this trade just as your stream ended i said i was, I was going to take this as this candle was closing mm -hmm. uh, so i'm looking for ver something very similar it's essentially just waiting for a pullback to a 200 moving average uh, and an overbought rsi which you can see exactly the same thing here uh, and then the entry criteria is a, a bearish engulfing candle uh, and that's just the strategy to get in for a short-term play um basically just a, a technical uh, technical idea um, but in terms of, of levels, I think it's quite difficult to gauge it on a, on a higher time frame. As you said, it, it's kind of ranging at the moment. Um, so I'd have to just take a, a stab at the sh uh, small, small time frames like the hourly uh, and play it from there and, and see how it plays. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, like, the, I like the setup. I like the moving average uh, kind of confluence there as well. And uh, we'll have to see if, if the dollar, uh, you know, I, I was pointing out as you came on the show that the dollar index um, seems to be kind of trending up on the daily chart uh, it's pulled back here and i would not be surprised if it does get sort of a, a last push here to that 106.4 level now of course yeah. i've talked about um earlier in the stream i was pointing out that i think that you know it's possible for us to get there on kind of a technical momentum basis but then once we get up to this 106 for uh four level what i think you need to see would be other central banks, as you pointed out, like Europe, um, other places starting to cut interest rates. Meanwhile, the Fed kind of wiping the slate clean for rate cuts this year. That would be, to me, the the bull case for you know the dollar. And I I don't necessarily think that's going to happen, but I do see the potential for the dollar to squeeze one more time up to that 106.4 level. So we'll have to see if that can uh, if that can play out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly the same thing as what I'm looking at. I mean, I don't want to bore you guys with, you know, too many words and bank reports and things, but there is another interesting one here. Uh, investors appear to have hit the pause button for now as they await further data to see if the Fed can cut rates this year. Uh, with the US, uh, US rates market still pricing in about 50 basis points worth of cuts by the central bank this year, investors understandably remain nervous. Um, so going off that, we could expect just lower volatility until we do get that result. Um, but yeah, I think there's quite a lot of focus um, on the dollar at the minute and a lot of uh, sort of indecision, I would say, on, on the long term outlook, really. Uh, so yeah, my, my idea really is just to go in for sort of intraday trades and then swing trades will be taken on things like the yen and the Swiss at the moment. Miko, uh, what are your thoughts on the dollar index? Are you bullish, bearish? What do you think? Yeah, I've been uh, pretty bullish on the dollar. Um, I'm still very bullish um, as we speak. I do think there is still a good possibility we can see high prices and then push back to the high. Uh, again, I'm looking at a lot of technicals here uh, on the DXY and that has been the trajectory for a while now. Um, this is a daily chart. We've made some nice bullish swings, some pullbacks, nice bullish swing again, another pullback. I'm looking at that continuing at least back to that swing high, at least back to major resistance. So I do think there's still a little bit more upside in the tank. Also looking at the lower time frames as well, we'll do something similar, uh, higher highs and higher lows. So again, as long as we're maintaining this bullish structure, I remain bullish. And if we were to go and break through this low here, then that's when I will 
uh, reanalyze and maybe maybe become bearish if things uh, look good. But for now, I'm still looking for more upside. So this bearish move we're seeing today, I'm just looking at that as a pullback. I do think price will find feet somewhere. We do have some resistance here as a price on high. This will be turned support. So maybe this could be a level that sends price up or maybe we have a, a even deeper pullback into this area. But I do think dollar uh, can still see high prices. I'm looking to short euro if it'd be kind enough to break outside of this range. It has been quite sideways um, for the past week or so. I'm looking to see if we can break to the downside and find some resistance. Uh, to plot some shorts from. Uh, I was selling pound USD over the past uh, couple of days. Uh, however, I just think I've been trailed out. Um, this is where I have my trail and stop loss too. So I think I've just been uh, taking out the trade. Um, but if I do get another opportunity, I will be looking at pound USD as well. Coming back into that low there. Try and find the short. Again, looking for uh, more dollar strength the market. So I'm very, very bullish on dollar. Uh, dollar crosses, I'm looking for more of the same. And uh, yeah, DXY still looks pretty bullish to me. Yeah, it. Uh, I would agree in terms of the the chart perspective. It still looks like it's uh, it's supported here. We had that big breakout of consolidation, uh, you know, a few weeks back, and we have been putting in these higher lows, higher highs. If you were a, a, a bear, I'd say you probably want to see those sorts of uh, higher lows be reversed. Uh, but for now, it does seem like the overall trajectory of the dollar seems higher. Uh, this 106.4 level is really what I'm curious about. And I mentioned earlier my fundamental thoughts on what would make the dollar uh, really break out of this. I think you'd probably have to see other central banks cutting interest rates and then the Fed kind of completely pause for the year. That would be what uh, would probably get a big push going on the dollar. So I think that we do have in the short term, maybe some more room to go back and retest this uh, kind of upper limit of this, this uh, recent consolidation. But we'll see if we can get beyond that. I think it would probably need some sort of big green candle on a fundamentals uh, driver or something like that. But uh, same question now to to you, Marco, in terms of the dollar index. Um, what are your thoughts today? Yeah, sure. So let me see my charts. I had to rejoin because I uh, got a new PC, so something messed up with Chrome. Oh, what, what, uh, what kind of PC did you get? Uh, just a MacBook, MacBook okay. Pro. Nice. Yeah, because That's I'm awesome. usually going around, traveling around, so it's kind of the best option for me. Oh yeah, it's so yeah. convenient. I I need to get a better uh, a better portable laptop. It's so much uh, so much nicer if you have a good one. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Kind of takes some time to get used to from Windows, but uh, still getting used to it for now. But yeah, it's it's quick, it's fast, and that's all I need. Okay, yeah. so. Um, Euro and US dollar for me is kind of flat and range bound on this one hour chart. So being more patient and I had it on my watch list because it had a nice descending channel marked up right here, but now it's not playing out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove uh, it from the watch list. EJ is very ascending. So I'm expecting this to reverse. It's going up very correctively. So what I want to see, I want to see an ascending channel and then something like this to happen but nothing is forming just yet Aussie was dollar had a nice liquidity sweep uh, sell of this top so identify the flat range and then basically sold the top of the liquidity area so that was a nice winning trade and now I'm looking to see again what will happen in these areas so just selling the top buying the bottom three to one risk reward fix stop loss and that's the game plan for the Oz and US dollar it's looking very flat very indecisive which is good for a range bound entry AJ most of the JPY pairs are just ascending heavily ascending so I'm looking for that downtrend looking for reversals that is on my radar and the pound is pretty corrective in this area uh, I was looking for potentially some buy setups here but then some selling pressure started to kick in on the very short term um, my forecast is gonna be I'm just looking for large momentum up uh, large momentum up or down so being more patient on the pound and NJ is the final one NJ is actually looking very flat it's not like AJ or EJ this one is looking very flat and very corrective so being more patient and that is kind of it for me today. Nothing is on the watch list. I'm waiting for momentum. I am looking for range bound entries on the Euro US dollar, 
and on the Aussie US dollar as well. And I had a question uh, about Edge Finders. So is it possible to go back in time and check out like the historical data of what kind of scores you got, for example, like a month ago or two months ago? Yes, yes. Oh, um, nice, nice, here, nice. Let me show you. Uh, this is gold since the beginning of this year. The all of mm -hmm. them that are presented uh, presented day by day. Um, so I think you guys might remember when I had that. Uh, I, I daydream about it every day. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just a little biased here. But when I had that really bullish setup on gold um, that I caught here that just went went crazy for a long period of time, um, that was that kind of territory, that kind of time. And then it was more bearish over here. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we track the scores over time. It makes it really uh, convenient for, for people who like to, to do like back testing or to, to test out the concepts of um you know just the different scores. yeah that's pretty cool i might run it up uh, against my trending entries see yeah. how the scores uh basically compared to my analysis for that trade see if maybe it can improve the win rate uh we're seeing a big jump in metals uh, off of this this kind of morning's report uh again the dollar moving lower is helping out that story gold up one percent and silver up 1.39 1.4 percent um so a little bit of uh update for you guys on 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 my side um i'm coming back from the dead it seems like this gold trade i had a, a trade that just went immediately against me um and then i'm also long silver which was like inches from getting stopped out and still could if we get you know a hot pce print tomorrow that could totally reverse this course and, and go lower but to me it actually seems like maybe metals are finding finding support off of the daily and off of the four hour i still i you know i mentioned i love that silver trade uh you know weeks ago should have taken it then should have could have woulda uh because i ended up taking it you know on a retest of this it's kind of hard to see on the daily but the four hour chart set it up you know looked like it was setting up i went long and i was too early on that one too so i was early on some of these ideas but i do still think that metals may have room to move higher um miko what do you think are you watching metals at all yeah, I'm keeping my, my eye on silver. Um, gold, on the other hand, I'm still not a big fan of. Um, mm. Still definitely very, very bullish on, on both of them. I do think long term. We can see uh, moves back to their highs, but gold has just been a little bit corrective. The thing I do like about gold is that we're still kind of respecting support, which I believe this is kind of like the area you're, you're generally buying from, or at least heavy stop loss in the deep. So, I think as long as we stay above here, I do think gold will eventually break to the upside. Um, so I do like that aspect, but again, a lot of my entries and um, a lot of my setups I'm looking at are on the four hour and the four hour has been quite choppy uh, as of late. So I wanna see some higher highs and some higher lows being printed first before I look to take any entries uh, on gold. And I think maybe we could be turning around. Um, I'll wait and see, but we're still respecting support, which is a good thing. So as long as we can keep maintaining that, I think eventually we'll, we'll um, break higher. If we do break support and things get a little bit uh, tricky. And in terms of silver, keep an eye on silver. Um, again, with this one, I don't like the fact that we have been in this prolonged kind of bearish move because we were looking very, very bullish last week and I thought um, after that impulse there, maybe some pullbacks look good, but I was expecting momentum to continue us. Uh, we have kind of lost some of the confluence with the trend line, which isn't make or break for me. I do like when we have a trend line confluence and just because we break a trend line doesn't necessarily mean we're turning direction, but it's always good to have that confluence. Um, and yeah, with silver, we are kind of at that kind of support level, which is if we're going to bounce, you know, this is the time to do it. And if this level breaks as well, it's just not looking um, that clear for me. So what I am looking for are some higher highs and some higher lows similar to what i'm looking for gold is if we can start printing some bullish structure again that'd be fantastic because we have been pretty consistent with these lower highs as well which again it just looks like a big correction to me so if we can start doing this that'd be fantastic and i'll look for a great give me test somewhere to find my entry so still do think we've got a really good chance of getting back to the highs for both of them uh, i'm still bullish on both of them but I just don't have a, an opportunity which fits the plan yet for myself. Sure. Sure. No, that's uh, that's totally fair. Uh, I would say that, you know, if I'm looking at like the hourly chart on gold, it is just absolutely 
gross. It's so choppy. It's so back and forth. Uh, I, you know, I've mentioned this, and I think in our last uh, conversation, I'm also very interested in gold, kind of from a fundamentals perspective, um, which is why I excuse like willing to to sit through a consolidation phase, uh, because I think that you know at some point it will break higher. Um, I could be early. I could be wrong about that, but um, that's why I have the trade on. So uh, we'll see. Uh, same question to you, uh, Marco, in terms of metals, gold or silver, either one. What are your thoughts on, on that area? Sure. So let's do gold. Uh, one hour chart, seeing a bit of bullish pressure, but nothing much, nothing significant. Four hour is going to be very range bound, stuck between the low and the high, at least according to my methodology. And the daily is going to be yeah, flat and range bound as well. So kind of looks like Bitcoin and we had a big uptrend, but now... I would need it to break some major levels so either this high or these lows that is going to determine a nice uptrend or a nice downtrend silver let me see uh silver so silver is looking a bit different let me start from the one hour nothing much happening on the one hour uh four hour is looking like it's in a big big descending channel so when I see these types of channels, I do expect the price to reverse in the opposite direction. In this case, that would be to the upside. So for me, um, I'm looking at a bullish scenario for silver, especially with this strong uptrend on the daily chart going uh, back a couple of months even. So yeah, this may be just a big, big, big pullback before the continuation of the of the up uptrend. So I can see how long plays uh, are good for this market. So this is the weekly chart on Bitcoin. And uh, we've talked about this for so long. And this exact level has been on our conversation for some time. I actually ended up taking a, a small position here uh, right around, well, let's see, my entry was right around 60,000. And so I am long with, uh, you know, a stop here on my idea. Uh, if price breaks through this this swing low, that's completely, you know, time for me to bail on it. But um, I, I think that, you know, if we look at it on like a daily chart, it's pretty choppy. It's pretty indecisive. Uh, but because I like the long term story for Bitcoin, because I think that, you know, for me, I could see I could see going uh, going to complete zero or I could see it going to a million at some point. I don't know. But um, the use cases seem to continuously expand. So longer term, I do like the idea of having a little bit of Bitcoin in the account. And uh, this is my first stab at trying to get long on some Bitcoin in, you know, a long time. So I don't know, um, Miko, what are your thoughts on, on crypto as a whole? And uh, if you, well, here's a, a side question. If you were to touch crypto, would you buy Bitcoin or would you touch something else like, uh, like Ethereum or um, an altcoin or a collection of altcoins? How would you play it if you were to, uh, you know, do something with crypto? Well, to be fair, I do have uh, a little bit of XRP actually. Okay. Uh, not much, but uh, I think I held it for maybe eight months now. Mm -hmm. um, but if I do look to get involved more crypto, I probably would go Bitcoin just because it's the biggest kid on the block. And I think sure. safest one as well. But uh, I think I bought maybe around here somewhere. So I pretty much start break even. Uh, but yeah, I probably would just look at, at Bitcoin. And I do think in the future, we still do have a lot more upside for, for Bitcoin. And I'm bullish long term on crypto in general as well. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would look at Bitcoin. I'm not so much of a fan of the price we're at, uh, 60K. I mean, of course, like you said, um, you know, this could be, you know, we could be looking back in the future saying, wow, 60K was so cheap, or we could be looking back <clears throat> saying how 60K was so expensive. Hmm. Um, but I would like to see a bigger correction just because of the big bull run we've had um, recently. Would I think we're going to have that correction? I'm not too sure because I'm looking at this this uh, descending channel, which we've been speaking about, we'll comes to the lower end of it, which is kind of where you've got your, your buy position and you know, Bitcoin does want to rally, this is a good place for that to happen. Um, so it's a, it's a nice place for a push, but I'm not too sure if I want to buy and hold from it in the long run. Maybe a nice swing position, but I think if I want to buy and hold, I want price to come a little bit deeper. Maybe I've been too picky, but no, that, that's just me. Um, so yeah, I'm bullish long term. I do think this is a nice place for potentially some upside, 
And um, yeah, I mean, we could see another bull swing for it actually. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and we'll certainly have to see. I think uh, just from a, a macro perspective too, like Bitcoin. Um, to me, will move likely in the same direction as the Nasdaq. And if, if the Nasdaq does kind of continue to see a strong year, uh, I think Bitcoin could actually really outperform uh, if we continue to see kind of risk on um, appetite, risk appetite stay strong. Uh, if investors and traders are getting back into kind of the higher risk stuff. I don't know if you guys obviously um, remember the 2021 time when everybody was going all the way out on the risk curve and going into like NFTs and super risky stuff. I, I made this reference yesterday, but in terms of like the risk curve, um, you have like like super safe stuff like bonds and then you have like stocks and then you have, um, you know, crypto and then you have like NFTs that's like all the way out there on the risk curve. And um, what what, you know, it seems like we we frequently see in bull markets is that people slowly advance on the risk curve and then it all comes crashing down at some point. But, um, you know, it kind of depends where we are in the cycle. I think right now stocks are like really in favor. And if they continue to be in favor, I think, you know, we see the, the risk curve. Uh, gain more appetite, but I don't know, just a, a concept to think about. Did you know we do a live trading show Monday through Friday with guests from all over the world? To get notified when we go live, click the bell button next to the subscribe button or check in at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have helpful free content in the description below and on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you tomorrow.